Good day everyone, this is Mr. Brian Bulaktin at your service. For the first module, you're going to learn about polynomial functions. And you have to listen very carefully to this tutorial because you're going to define polynomial function, you're going to identify polynomial function, and you're going to determine degree, leading coefficient, leading term, and constant of given polynomial functions. But before we proceed to polynomial functions, we have to understand first what a polynomial is. So we'll be talking first about polynomial expressions or polynomials. So if we say polynomials, polynomials are composed of constants or numbers, variables or letters, and exponents. These are actually the numbers that you see on the upper right side of the variable. The combination of constants, variables, and exponents are what we call terms. So let me give you first an example of a term. So 2, 2 is a number. So we call this a constant. So a constant is a number without any letter beside it. Let's say you have x squared. This letter x here is what we call variable. And 2 on the upper right side of x is the what we call exponent. Okay, so your x is your variable, and 2 here is your exponent. When these are combined, let's say this will become 2x squared, you are actually forming the what we call term. So in this case, we have, or we are forming, one term. Let's have this for example. 2x squared plus x minus 1. How many terms are there in this example? In this example, we have three terms. You have 1, 2, and 3. So we have three terms. We need to understand terms. It's because Polynomials are composed of terms. So if we say polynomials, these are actually algebraic expressions of one or more terms composed or consist of constants that are multiplied by one or more variables raised to a non-negative integral power. There are three important terms that would help you in identifying whether a given expression is a polynomial or not. And these are non-negative integral power. So if you will say non-negative, you're talking about positive. Positive whole. Because we're talking about integers. Whole number exponents. So this means positive whole number exponents. So that's your clue there. That is how you will identify whether a given expression is a polynomial or not. All you have to do is just to look up the exponents of your variables. And if they are positive, if they are whole numbers, then the given expressions are polynomial expressions. Otherwise, not. Now let's have this set of algebraic expressions. Let us identify which of the following is a polynomial expression or not. In this activity, if your answer is polynomial, you're going to write P. And if not, NP. Let's start with number 1, 20x. Again, our main task here is to identify whether it is a polynomial or not. So, all you have to do is just to look up the exponents of your variable x. If they are positive whole numbers, then they are polynomial expressions. So, let's start with number 1, 20x. The exponent of x here is positive 1. Therefore, number 1 is a polynomial. Now, let's proceed to number 2. We have negative 30x squared plus 1. What is our exponent of x? We have 2. 2 is positive, therefore, number 2 is also 
a polynomial. Now, let's move on to number 3. We have x squared plus a square root of 2x minus 4. Is it a polynomial expression or not? The answer for number 3 is not. It is not polynomial. Why? The middle term or the second term makes it not polynomial. It is because this can be expressed in the form the quantity of 2x to the exponent of 1 half. If you're going to recall the lesson about radicals, you would know that a radical can be expressed as quantities raised to a fractional exponent. Now let's move on to our fourth example. We have x squared plus square root of 2x minus 4. Let us check the exponents of our variable x. For the first term, we have 2. For the second term, we have 1. Therefore, the fourth example is a polynomial. You have noticed, guys, that the fourth example and the third, ex three, third examples have similarities, right? However, it is in the middle term that they differ. It is because in number 3, you have x is placed under the radical sign. While in number 4, x is placed outside the radical sign. So you have to remember this. For it to become a polynomial, your variables must not be written inside a radical symbol. Now let's move on to number 5. Let's take... 3x to the exponent of 1 half plus 4x to the exponent of 3 halves plus 20. Our exponents of x are the following, 1 half and 3 halves. They are fractions. Therefore, this fifth example is not polynomial. Now, let's proceed to number 6. 7x to the exponent of 1.5 minus 8x to the exponent of 0 0.5 plus 5x. Let's get the exponents. We have 1.5, 0 0.5, and 1. The exponents are, some of the exponents are in decimals. Therefore, it is not polynomial. And now, let's move on to our last example for this set. We have... 2 over x squared plus 3 over x minus 1. You have noticed that our variable x are written as denominators. Actually, if they, they can be rewritten as numerators, but you have to change the signs if you're going to recall our law of exponent. So this can be rewritten in the form 2 times x to the exponent of negative 2 plus 3 times x to the exponent of negative 1 minus 1. The exponents of x are negative 2 and negative 1. Therefore, the seventh example is not polynomial. So our seventh example is not polynomial. So you have to bear this in mind. If the given expressions are already simplified, yet denominators still contain variable x, then the given expression is not polynomial. And there you have it, guys. Identifying and knowing polynomial is no sweat at all. All you have to do is to remember these three important keywords. You have non-negative integral power, or in other words, positive whole number exponents. Thank you so much for bearing with me. If you have questions and clarifications or more clarifications about the topic today, you can message me through Messenger. My FB account is Brian Bulakti. Thank you.